Greetings, my friends. Um, so this video is about the uh, local nuclear processing plant that is uh, within my town. It's not nearly widely as known as other uh, nuclear facilities, but this is actually one of two nuclear fuel manufacturers in the U.S. that make uh, the nuclear fuel for naval vessels. And uh, that company is called Nuclear Fuel Services, or NFS. I have family that have worked there and do work there. And, uh, well, I mean, you know, I'm not one of these proponents that like nuclear fuel. And uh, that's why I bothered making this video. Um, this place is always getting in trouble for um, being dirty in our town. Um, they've contaminated Impact Plastics, uh, their neighbor's property. But uh, they contaminated quite a bit of their property with, uh, uh, you know, their nuclear byproduct trash. And when I was in high school, they actually weren't even making fuel. They were busy digging it all up because this company had buried, I don't know how many barrels of nuclear waste just in the ground right under its facility. And by the way, that garbage leaked down into the uh, drinking water here in Irwin. And uh, it's beyond me why anybody drinks that stuff. I don't, I don't drink anything out of the tap water. Um, I do wash my clothes with it and I shower in it, which I shouldn't. But uh, when it comes to cooking and drinking, this right here is, is what I buy. It is distilled water. That, that's not just purified, but it's vapor distilled. And uh, that, that's about as clean as it's going to get. And go ahead. I know, some of you may already know that, that. And they'll say that, you know, like science just say that you shouldn't be drinking that. It's not healthy. Well, guess what? Me and my wife, we've been drinking distilled water for over six years, and uh, and I mean, that's all we drink is distilled water. I mean, when I make tea, because that's the only other thing I drink other than water is tea, and uh, that's that's made out of distilled water as well, and guess what? It, it doesn't cause any kind of problems because the pH is slightly acidic, or because it leaches minerals out of your body. We've got two healthy children that have... Uh, like I said, my wife has also been drinking this, and we've got two healthy children, so the whole myth that it depletes your body of minerals is complete lie. But anyway, that's not what this video is about, um, other than I don't drink the water. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at this news article. Here on the Johnson City Press, my local uh, newspaper's website, you can go ahead and read about this. Um, I'll place the link down there in the bottom. And... Uh, you get fuel services. An unplanned chemical reaction involving uranium at nuclear fuel services has prompted a special federal inspection slated to begin Tuesday at the Irwin Nuclear Processing Plant. Look at this. A reaction occurred in a two liter bottle stored in an access controlled storage area. The bottle contained cleaning materials and some nitric acid and a small amount of uranium. But now nobody got hurt or injured, praise God. But all the same, NFS is repeatedly always getting in trouble for crazy stuff like this. I mean, um, they have a, they have a really nasty track record. Like for instance, here um, on the same website, the JohnsonCityPress.com, if you go to their search uh, thing and just type in NFS, you'll uh, get other things. Here on September the fifth of two thousand fourteen, they also had another violation, which was. Uh, a uh, level four, and they claim that this violation is the lowest of the NRC security levels. And uh, this was an incident involving the disabling of safety valves within one hour. The report states that NFS notified the NRC of the event following monitoring after first determining the event not to be reportable. Um. Let's see here. According to the NRC, an NFS employee was observed by an NFS supervisor on June 17 to be improperly opening two valves identified as key safety devices. These valves, which are intended to be manually operated to prevent a hazardous chemical solution from spilling and causing chemical exposure, were opened or were propped open, rendering them unable to perform their safety function. Oh, so in other words, they were disabling security devices. Hmm. Of course, they'll claim that none of that, nothing was spilled or any of that, but NFS did have to immediately shut down. But here we have a statement that says that the violation was determined to be more than minor because the delayed license and reporting impact, reporting impacted the regulatory process, and was similar to a secure, 
a severity level for example a very low safety significance in the enforcement policy but in a, in, but basically what happened here is is that nuclear fuels was supposed to report the incident with one hour and they failed to do so and the uh, employee had forced a valve to stay open with a means other than just physical force so in other words like you know like he jammed the valve open and caused it to where the valve couldn't function anymore that way, not only was he just endangering himself, he made sure to endanger everyone else as well. There's, other, there's two other incidences in which NFS failed to uh, identify, failed to uh, contact the NRC for events that required unplanned medical treatment after two individuals became contaminated with radioactive materials. Um, these events occurred on October 17th and of 29 and October 29 of 2013 that the workers at NFS were injured and transported off-site for medical treatment and these incidents occurred during the NRC's last program adjustment review period which ran from January to December 2013 and had to be reviewed to determine their severity. Um, the first incident involved a security officer who lost consciousness and fell to the floor in a contamination controlled area at NFS. She, sa she said uh, spreadable contamination was present in the officer's clothing was present on the officer's clothing when he was taken to the hospital, but NFS failed to notify the NRC within 24 hours of the incident. <laughs> she said on October 29, 2013, uh, an incident involved a maintenance mechanic who, while working in a ra radiological work site, fell and broke his leg. The report indicates this worker also had contamination on his clothing and the skin of his leg. In both the incidents, the contamination level was several times the background reading. Uh, these issues were, were not detailed until a July inspection report that stated the wor workers did have spreadable contamination on them. Now, pay attention. They were transported to a hospital and they were contaminated with radiological material. But NFS says we couldn't care less about making sure other people are aware of this because, you know, money. And quotes here. It looks like NFS did not tell NRC the truth, she said, and she being O'Neill. So according to the NFS reply to the violation, they finally reported the two events in July of 2014, just a couple of months ago, and now the public is just finding out about it nearly a year later because that's the type of regard that NFS has for the citizens of Irwin and, and everybody else that surrounds Irwin. They couldn't care less. They want to keep their, their incidences quiet. But also you can read on December 27 that John C. Price also had a, another article that um, there was citizens in Irwin that was also suing NFS because look they were releasing uh, radioactive material and injuring people and property damage. But a federal judge dismissed the class action lawsuit filed back in 2011, and the complaint that was filed states as follows. Throughout the operational history of these facilities, defendants have caused the release of radioactive, hazardous, and toxic, su toxic substances into the surrounding environment. These releases have contaminated the air, soil, surface, water, and groundwater in the surrounding communities. They harm directly and proximately caused by the defendants including property damage and personal injuries. In 2011, attorneys for the defendants filed a motion to seek dismissal for the plaintiff's uh, complaint for failure to state a claim on which relief could be granted. And, I mean, you can read on January the 9th, there was another article. Monday afternoon, chemical leak at nuclear fuel service facility led to the shutdown of the facility and relocation of employees working nearby. Um, According to a release issued by NFS at around noon Monday, a nitric acid leak occurred in an outdoor chemical storage area. Um, you can go ahead and do your own research about the long list of other um, violations that this place has uh, incurred, and um, it's untelling what else has happened over there that the public is never going to be made aware of, because if it was something serious because of um, the games that they played, personally, I don't think that they would ever bother telling us if there was an actual real malfunction going over there. You know, it would just be like what happened over in Chernobyl. They would probably wait a whole month before they'd tell us, oh, by the way, your, your water that you're getting from, from the tap right now is probably glowing. And the reason being, 
So anyway, people, um, it's not just nuclear plants that you have to beware of. Um, it's all the nuclear installations. Um, this place is just... They, they couldn't care less about the people that live here. And the way that the business is run only proves such. So anyway, um, thank you for watching this video. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Praise the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.